David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Politics, entertainment, and current events. Personal revelations, spiritual observations, my life's insanities in Oive, so much more. Hey, 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 hey. We're asking, hey, 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 we're asking you, what do you think? You can email us, by the way, during the show, david at he must org. That's david at he must org. We have said this before, we'll say it again. Not super califragilistic expialidocious, just david at he must org. You can text us, by the way, 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. You can do that during the show. So I want to let you know a couple things. We skipped that little intro part. Let me check with Gabriel to see if we're able to go to the fly thing because that's the next thing I want to try and go to. So I want to make sure we're there. So before we get there, though, I do want to let you know that was a fill. Okay, now listen. Now listen. That was a fill, a new fill, and we've got – 30 new fills plus 25 new sounds plus I'm working on 70 other fills. 70 other fills. Isn't that a lot of fills? That's a lot of fills. And we got the new website launching probably Friday that Josh has almost done. It's really slick. It looks really nice. Although I will say when we send you the website, there's only a little bit of time left for the book itself. And then uh, the last thing I do want to remind you before we get to the trivia or something else is that you can always call us, okay, Al wants to know where we found all those people named Phil. Anyway, uh, you can always call us at 972-445-0770. Now, before we go to talking about Gabriel or anything else, we do have somebody who's calling in. Do we want that? Is it a comment? Sure, sure. You know what? Absolutely, positively perfect. We'll do this prayer request right after bat. And you want to know why? Because that's what we do. That's why. Send them on through. Go ahead and send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Oh, this is Mary Poppins. <laughs> What's happening, Samson? <laughs> hey, uh, the reason I'm calling, like, I received uh, a prayer request from from the Middle East region, one of our missionary friends. She is applying for for a U.S. visa to come, and but she has been having a lot of spiritual warfare, uh, so she requested if I could uh, uh, pass this prayer request so that believers could pray with, with her on her behalf so she would receive a U.S. visa to come, uh, yeah, so, so that the process will be expedited and she will receive God's prayer because she doesn't have those big bank balance or things like that, but she has God. So but that's a very humble request. Yeah, from what's her, her, what's her name? Me. What's her name? Uh, uh, Give me uh, something. Anything. Let, let, let's just pray for that missionary friend. Missionary Put friend. It in this. Got it. Hold on. I've got to write that down. Yeah. I can't remember everything, you know. I, I only have a doctorate. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, yeah. then, so now what about for you, bro? Oh, the other thing earlier I was listening about your prayer request, somebody else, like John and his wife. Yep, yep. I felt like while well, I was praying and I felt like one of the uh, God's name in the Old Testament is uh, Jehovah Alroy, the God who sees us. Yep. So I felt like a God is seeing John and his wife and their situation because it's not uh, any hidden things from him, and he knows exactly. And I felt like to pray uh, according to First Peter five seven that we would give all their cares into our loving Heavenly Father because He cares for them. So just a part of. Uh, yeah, a word of encouragement for them to just focus on First Peter five seven. 
Well, let's do it. Let's pray. Let's go forward yeah. to the Lord. Let's do it together. And everybody is listening. It's like you're thinking, well, you know, um, you know, I've got prayer requests. I know. And you want to know the best way to get your prayer requests answered? Pray for other people. Let's do that right now. Let's do it together. Father, we come before you right now. And of course, we lift, lift up the Sam's missionary friend. And we, of course, we always pray for protection and provision for missionary people we encounter. It's just something that uh, I've been doing for a while, Lord, and I think it's a good thing to do. But in this case, we have something that's way beyond on my scope, there's got to be, there needs to be, or hopes to be, an expedition of, of the ability to do the work and to travel on a visa and to come to the country and to do different things. And whatever those plans are, Lord, whatever the snafu is, whatever is blocking it, Lord, you know, kind of like the children of Israel at the Red Sea, just part the waters and let her go forward on dry land. Because that way, it's an easier walk and you are not delivering her out of the situation, just bringing her through it. And that's what we pray you would do for her. And as well, we pray for everybody who's got cares that are just really heavy, burdened, heavy duty. And I, I just sense in my heart, Lord, this is going to increase uh, before you return. And what we're going to do is petition you and petition you and stand in your truth and stand by faith in a God who loves us. And so we're asking that all of us who have these cares, these heaviness, these burdens, that we would cast these off of ourselves, literally throw them off of ourselves and into the palm of your hands and then not take them back, but trust you that you will do the best that can be done done with it, and that we will have an actual faith, though mustard seed or not, an actual faith that says, Lord, please move this mountain in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen, brother. Yeah, well, thank you so very much for praying uh, with us. You got it. You keep us posted on how that's going, okay? Yes, I will. Okay. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, good job. All right, so now let's get to the next thing. So we do have a trivia question. Okay. This is, let me just say this real quickly. Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll skip the uh, going to you at this point, Gabriel, because we're just far deep in the show. But this trivia question will make up for it. I promise you. You ready? All right, ready for, ready for the best trivia question. I've never asked a question. I haven't asked this question this funny in six months. <laughs> That's the, ooh, what a setup, right? Okay, right. I found this in the book. Look, look, I want to show. Look, it's in this book. I'm not kidding. He's in this right here. True or false? In the desert, Jesus was tempted to turn stones into biscuits. True or false? <laughs> if you think you know the answer, you can call in 972 445 0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. You can also send an email, david at he must org. I think it's rather funny that Eric answered Peter. <laughs> I was going to do with anything. Uh, yeah. All right. So the question is, true or false, in the desert, Jesus was tempted to turn stones into biscuits. I'm, I'm taking a breath here because I find that to be uh, rather humorous. Uh, if you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. I cannot tell you how many people have sent uh, texts. It's incredible. Uh, 214-210-8483 for the text on the David at hemustincrease.org is the email if you want to send it by email. I love shows like this because we don't know what's going to happen and we don't care. Oh, wait. We talk about that all the time. Uh, a couple things I do want to share with you. Uh, I need prayer. I, guess, I know you guys know this, but I need prayer for ministry direction. Uh, and so we've got some things that are opportunities that are coming. Plus, we have new things coming for the website. Plus, we have new other stuff that uh, is taking place, and we want to just uh, have fun with it. The reality check is that we have... Uh, many more fills that we're going to be putting in. So you'll hear different things, different sounds, and things will come off a little different. It won't be any different in the ministry, we hope. We hope the Holy Spirit's just present with us in everything, anything and everything we do. All right, keep in mind what I'm asking. You're going to have to go to the King James to answer because i got a couple of people answering and you can't be answering this incorrectly. True or false, in the desert, Jesus was tempted to turn stones into biscuits. Biscuits. Uh, if you think you know the answer, 
reach out to us. Uh, 972-445-0770. Also, 214-210-8483 or David, he must increase. Dot org. Let me do this DDD. That's right. Ginny caught that. <laughs> she got the first part of that. Uh, this is called For Their Sake, Not Ours. First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1 through 2. Listen to this. This is important because the Lord loves to bless his kids, and you're one of his kids. But the Lord doesn't bless you just because you're super special. Now, it's not that you're not super special. In other words, double negative. In other words, you are super special. You're super special enough where the, in the kingdom of God, God chooses you to spend eternity with, right? Whether you believe in free will or predestination, and then and, 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 uh, whether you believe in four it's all true. I don't know why anybody believes in only one part, not the other. From God's point of view, he knows everything. From the human point of view, we don't know anything. But God has chosen you from his point of view to be with him forever and eternity. He loves you. You're fantastic. You're special. But he doesn't just bless you because you are just special. First Chronicles 14, 1 through 2, King Hiram of Tyre sent envoys to David along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters to build a palace for him. Then David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that his kingdom had been exalted for the sake of his people Israel. Now, what that tells us, and I've talked about it not that long ago, but the reason I'm bringing it up again is because A palace was built for David, and David knew that the Lord had made him king, but he also knew at that moment it was not for his sake, but for the sake of others. And the challenge in that theology, the challenge in that teaching is what has God blessed you with that he blessed you with for the sake of others? That's that's it. You don't even have to. It's not. It's not genius. It's just like yeah, the Lord will bless you, and some of those blessings you are to use on yourself. That's the gear for it. And nobody's trying to say that never happens. But there are times in our lives that we are blessed, or exalted, or honored, or touched, or infused, or strengthened, or anointed. And it's for the sake of other people. Yeah, you know, how tight does that fit into our DNA? Draw closer to the Lord daily. Never be ashamed of Jesus' words. Always be ready to serve. Why? Because of this. Because God may bless you. He may bless you in ways you have not even yet anticipated. Uh, Perhaps financial. Perhaps it's position. Perhaps it's authority. Perhaps it's an answered prayer at a unique time. I don't know. But oftentimes, God does things through us to demonstrate his love through us so that through us it can be to others. Just be aware of that. You don't, have to, you don't have to be freaky about it, but stay in touch with it. God blesses you so that you can be a conduit of his blessings. Okay? The answer to the question, and I'm not going to justify or anything, but the answer to the question is Jesus was tempted in the to turn stones into biscuits. He was tempted to st- turn stones into bread. So if you said biscuits, it's not that it was wrong, but... It was a joke, and I couldn't laugh any harder, so you needed to catch the humor part of that. So I'll give everybody a .5 because bread and biscuits are the very similar, although for some people they're the exact same. But it really was, you know, biscuits versus bread. And, okay, we'll just leave it there. We're going to take our break and then come back, and who knows what's going to happen. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience Right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Just as I am, you reach down and see. This KAAM radio show with your very own David Spoon is not a business, but a nonprofit ministry first and foremost committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and strategically equipping the saints. Our mission is to educate, encourage, and entertain Christian believers, the hurting, and those not yet believers who need biblical truths. 
to continue our radio ministry and message of truth, we need many of our faithful listeners to support us, as well as ministry partners who might wish to sponsor the He Must Increase ministry. By giving, you wonderfully facilitate our priorities of assertively teaching the Word of God, and you get nothing in return. No quid pro quo. Nothing but a receipt at year end indicating you gave to us since your donation is 100% tax deductible. Remember that it says in Corinthians that whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Or in Proverbs where it teaches that a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. But if you cannot give, no problem. Continue to enjoy and learn and give however you see fit whenever you can. To support us, go to he must increase.org. That's he must increase.org. Such support is terribly appreciated, knowing it enables our beloved David Spoon to give to all of us his time, energy, like so few can, right here on KAAM. What is the David Spoon experience? The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me. Doesn't he know there's a lot of cholesterol and lard? <laughs> I'm losing it here. What? The lard? What is that guy? Where is he from? <laughs> the David Spoon Experience. The Christian faith is being attacked. 50 years ago, people would disagree with Christianity, but with a sense of respect. Those days are over. The rage, the flesh, the enemy, and the atmosphere of sin is growing and growing. Jesus said in Matthew 24, the love of many will grow cold. And if it's not the end now, it's certainly a lot closer than it was yesterday. You may be from a Baptist background. David Spoon has that. You may have a Pentecostal background. He has that too. You may have a non-denominational background. Yep, he's got that as well. You may be from the Church of Christ, Presbyterian, Methodist, Church of God, or some other denomination. But if you're looking for a show that's Bible-based, spirit-led, and a bit nutty, give David a listen for a while. If you like it, great. If not, no worries. The David Spoon Experience. Welcome back. To the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. You know why I like shows like today? Just so you can know. I don't even know what's going to happen. It's like it goes up, it goes down. So, yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of like, hmm, what will happen next? I have no idea, except I have this trip. Question for you, and you guys should be able to get this. There's a couple of words that will work with this, but I will leave that to your discretion. What kind of heart, according to Proverbs, has a continual feast? What kind of heart, according to Proverbs, has a continual feast? If you think you know the answer, 972 445 Seven seven zero. You can also text in 214-210-8483 as well. You can send an email, david at he must org. If you're going to call, you probably want to do it sooner than later because I have a joke. It's a little long. It's not that funny, but I'm doing it anyway. So you might as well just be prepared for that. Okay. And then I will say with some of the... Newer fills that are coming in, we get to play some of the older fills and see some of that stuff like the lard. <laughs> the lard is good to me. <laughs> really. And so I thank the lard. Uh, anyhow, I'm getting ready to do that joke. I'll just offer the trivia one more time. Uh, you guys, you're going to be lucky if you get out of this uh, with uh, all your brains intact. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, the What kind of heart, according to Proverbs, has a continual feast? If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483 or send an email, david at he must dot org. It is now I'm going to the joke, so... Uh, I'm not really expecting a lot out of this one, so I'm telling Gabriel ahead of time. Uh, ahead of time. Eh, 
that's all I'm telling you on this joke. All right, here we go. Uh, now, some people might enjoy it. There were two elderly people living in trailer estates of Florida Mobile Home Park. Uh, he, one of them was a widower and the other was well, a widower and a widow and a widow. So it was a he and a she. They had known one another for a number of years. And then one evening there was a community supper in the big activity center. The two were at the same table across from one another. As the meal went on, he made a few admiring glances at her and finally gathered his courage to ask her, will you marry me? After about six seconds of careful consideration, she answered, yes. Yes, I will. The meal ended, and with a few more pleasant exchanges, they went to their respective places. Next morning, he was troubled. Did she say yes, or did she say no? He couldn't remember. Try as he would, he just could not recall. Not even a faint memory. With trepidation, he went to the telephone and called her. First, he explained, that he didn't remember as well as he used to. Then he reviewed the lovely, lovely evening past. As he gained a little more courage, he inquired, Well, I asked if you would marry me. Did you say yes or did you say no? He was delighted to hear her say, Why, I said yes, yes I will, and I meant it with all my heart. And then she continued, And I'm so glad that you called because I couldn't remember who had asked me. Because they were older. <laughs> that's, that's, probably, that's probably as good as that one could get. Good job, Gabriel. That was as good as we were going to get on that one. All right. Come on. Uh, what kind of heart, according to Proverbs, has a continual feast? If you think you know, 972 that whole thing should have been the hint. 214-210-8483 or send an email, David, at he must increase dot org. Uh, I got my teachings around here somewhere. Where did my papers go? Oh, here they are. Okay. Uh, here you go. Uh, I'm a kind of a staunch guy on stuff like this, and I think you guys know it pretty well if you listen to the show. Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. <sighs> Ouch. This is uh, a spoken religious legalism that Paul is addressing. People providing rules and regulations birthed by human wisdoms. Acting religious in nature. Most of this sounds like a lot of church or ministry teaching. It certainly doesn't sound like necessarily worldly teaching. Here's the problem that people forget. There is an old nature. There is a new nature. The new nature is the born-again spirit nature that you have when you said yes to Jesus, accepted Jesus Christ by Lord in your heart. He comes and lives in your heart by faith. The Holy Spirit comes and actually takes up residency inside you because you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you now have a born-again spirit in there with the Holy Spirit, which you did not have before. That's the new you. The old you has been positionally crucified and will be eradicated at the time of the great either judgment or at the end of the millennium or whatever point you want to pull to. I don't even care. In the meantime, Paul tells us in five different texts, take off the old person, put on the new. Take off the old, put on the new. Don't walk in the old, walk in the new. Don't walk in the old, you walk in the new. Why? Because the old one, though positionally crucified, still hangs out as referenced in Ephesians chapter 4 when it makes mention that it still has growth patterns. Here's the issue. When we're trying to overcome evil, evil desires, it's not by rules and regulations. You do you do that? Good luck. Let me know how it goes. It's by walking in the new nature that you overcome evil desires inside of you. The old nature will never be sufficient and the rules and the regulations will never be substantial enough to curb the appetite of the old nature because it is a nature steeped in sin. 
The new nature born by the Spirit, born in reflection of God, is the only way to walk above and beyond the yuck that the old nature has thrown in your general life direction. Now, understanding that there's the new nature and the old nature, I'm going to read it again and then tell me the input you get from the Lord. I don't have to do this. This is God laying it out before you. Colossians 2.23, these rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. The only way that you can overcome evil desires is in the new person that you are in Christ. And before everybody jumps off the bandwagon like the one person who teaches in Texas, kind of far away from here, but does not have it all together, it's quite simple. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, uh, all things are new. The old is gone, the new is, is there. But it does say if any man is in Christ, and many of us many times throughout the day are not walking in Christ, contrary to popular opinion. In fact, many of us barely walk in Christ. It's funny because uh, in Jesus we have a new mind. Unfortunately, there's very few Christians who use it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't write that. I'm just pointing that out. Uh, so that is the answer to that. I just want to make sure you understand, and I'm not trying to guilt anybody. The way to walk above the things that are overcoming you is to not walk into that same realm, but to walk in the power of the new man, which is reflected in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that is how we overcome the old. Get that? Super important. Super, super, super. Okay, what kind of heart, according to Proverbs, has a continual feast? The answer would be a joyful heart, a cheerful heart, a merry heart. A merry heart doth make like medicine. That's the kind of heart you want to have, okay? All right, that helps you have a joyful feast. All right, we'll take our break and then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. Don't go anywhere. What is the David Spoon Experience? Imagine yourself on a rocket ship racing at a thousand miles an hour into space. Once there, you can sense the power and the presence of the majestic and the divine. You forget about your troubles and your fears, and you just float in peace without a worry in the world. There are no struggles, no pain, no discomfort. It's soothing, calm, comfortable. But then the show starts. And you realize that none of that stuff has anything to do with the show. What were you thinking? The David Spoon Experience. Only for the brave of heart and the bored. They were sisters. That is correct, sir. You are right. And it's like, it's like, I'm not saying, I don't want to you know, say it, but like, yuck. <laughs> that's all I can say. It's like, I'm sorry. That's all I can come up with. Like, yowza. <laughs> well, he was, he was tricked into it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go with that. But I, I mean, if you're the two sisters, you just got to be thinking, now, wait a second here. <laughs> 
Can I can I tell a real quick joke? Abs- it, it, I won't take up much time. Hopefully, but I'll absolutely. try to make it uh, try to make it uh, biblical, but not scriptural. I'm with you. That's about 99 percent of everything we do on jokes. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you understand. Well, to, to set this up, okay. To set this up, uh, when I ask the question, you'll have to answer it. To the first thing that pops into your head, otherwise it, it'll, it's it's kind of like those knock knock jokes. You have to say knock knock, you know, or who's there. Um, but, so anyway, Paul was out in the Mediterranean Sea. He was on uh, sailing across it, and right before the storm hit, he was writing some letters. And he was he was sitting there writing, and one of the sailors came up and looked at him and said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Well, I'm writing some letters here." And he Paul you know, put down his his uh, quill and. Um, parchment and looked up at uh, the sailor and says decided this is the time to talk to him he says now here's the question David and this is where you have to answer Okay. what is a pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet uh, arr, 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 and, the, and, and I... the sailor said nah that would be the sea matey the sea <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so it's not the R. No, it's the C. It's the C, matey. Hey, hey I love your show. Thanks, thanks uh, for keeping keeping it going. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being such a, a great brother and a great support. We appreciate you. Sometimes Sometimes. Oh, welcome back. To the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. We're getting ready for so many things, just so many things. Eric Eric thinks that was a dumb joke. I think it was pretty good, right? You got that? What's his favorite letter? Pirate's favorite letter? Arr. No, it's the C. That's oh, not bad. All right. Uh, you guys should know this, but this is a tough one. So is that my nice way of saying it's a tough one? It's a nice, nice one. Uh, 150 Jewish, uh, Jewish people and officials ate at this person's table who had prepared for him each day. Uh, who was this person that uh, uh, hosted this table? Think of Old Testament. Think of something we have studied in the past. 150 Jewish people. Joanne and Cordelia wasting no time. 150 Jewish people and officials ate at his table who had prepared for him uh, each day. Uh, had prepared his food each day. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not an easy one. I recognize it's not an easy Not everything is easy. Per se, uh, 972-445-0770 is the number to call. Uh, double checking, making sure that our phone is clicked together, so it should be all set. Uh, 214-210-8483. Uh, that is the text. And then uh, David at he must increase dot org. That would be uh, the email. That goes along with that. So I'm going to get ready to send you up to the website in a second. I just want to say a couple of things before we do. Okay? All right. We have a great time on the show. Love the show. Love doing the show. But we, we do have some financial needs that do need to be covered. We thank everybody for all the giving they're doing. If you have never given, we would can ask you to consider praying about it because we need that in order to keep going into, especially if we're looking at any expansion whatsoever. So by expansion, we're not moving off the station or anything. We're talking about doing maybe simulcast or stuff like that. We'll, we'll talk about that down the road. So I really need you to take that part seriously. Plus... The other part about this is we because we're doing a new website and it's not costing the ministry anything, uh, so we're going to give a little bit of promotion to my son as he's done that for our ministry. Well, I do want to let you know that those free books that are on the website are free like till Friday, and then after Friday, they, they – watch this – they ain't free. <laughs> so, in other words, so they're free for a little while, and then that's it. So I'm going to send you up to the website because on the website there is a place to give and information to give. So I want you to go there and pray about it if the Lord puts on your heart. Great. If not, do not. I just don't want you to guilt out of this. I want you to do it because it's in your heart to do it, and you believe it's what the Lord wants. So check out hemustincrease.org. 
prayer request? He must increase.org. Praise report? He must increase.org. Looking to give to this ministry? He must increase.org. Confused by what's happening right now? He must increase.org. He must increase.org. <laughs> Watch up, Doc. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Uh, just real quickly, Annika wanted to know how to get a hard copy. You got to do that on uh, Amazon. That's the way. That's the way you get a hard copy, unless you want, like, uh, what is it? They have the the Kindle thing. Uh, just let you. Know. All right, somebody is calling in. They have a comment, or you want to ask something, or something along those lines. Send them on through, and then you can back up that. We'll do the trivia after that. Uh, knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hi, David. This is Deborah. Hi, Deborah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I hope you're doing okay today. I'm doing okay today. I had a little bit of a rest yesterday, and the best part about it is I got to eat a, a corned beef sandwich. So I was pretty happy. All right. <laughs> I know. That, that for me, that's like well, that's a highlight. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment. Uh-huh. You know, the Lord is so good to me, but the Lord is not good to me. <laughs> I put on a good 25 or 30 pounds of it lately. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> so funny. You are so funny. That is so funny. Is that not great? The lard? The lard is good to me. That's funny. Okay. Well, thank you. God bless you. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. Uh, the lard is good to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just so funny. Come on. If you're not laughing right now, there's something wrong. The lard is good. The lard is good to me. <laughs> so I think the lard. <laughs> okay. Oh, nobody's making fun of anybody. No, we're making fun of everybody. It's much more fun that way. Uh, all right, back to our trivia question. We'll give you a chance to call in and or. Uh, this is a tough one, so I recognize that. But it's a book that we studied I don't know if it was my favorite book that we studied. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, 150 Jewish people and officials ate at this person's table and prepared food for him all the time. Who was this that is uh, that had this table? What uh, official is this referring to? If you think you know, 972-445-0770. Uh, as well, you can uh, text in 214-210-8483 or send an email, David. At he must increase dot org. Okay, I think we have the full cut of that. That's going to play down the road. The whole where I do the whole thing about the cholesterol and it's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, I think it's funny. Uh, let me do this. This is a shorter teaching, but it's kind of a nice teaching, and it's one of the things. Uh, let me say this real quickly. So, have you ever gone through uh, a day or two or three or four or ten or twenty or fifty, and you're just like. Man, sometimes it feels harder than uh, than it normally is, and sometimes you're a little more drained. Sometimes the day you wake up and you're doing better, and sometimes the days that you wake up a little a little more difficult. And it get there's that part that that easily uh, you know kind of can discourage people. And so this this DDD is something that I think is you know real important. Most of the stuff I teach I think is pretty important. It's called the lost art of eternal hope that's the name of it okay it says this luke 10 17 the 72 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you nevertheless do not rejoice in this That the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So it is easy when we have warfare in life, emotional, psychological, physical warfare, it is easy to get uh, caught up in it. It's easy to get discouraged by it. It's not unusual. And it's it's easy to uh, – what's the word I want to use? To get stuck in the minutia of the whole thing. 
And so these guys come back and they have great victory over the demons and they're just like, <laughs> the demons are shut and they're just like, I mean, they're just super excited, right? It's cool. Demons are subject to them. And the key is, of course, he's, they said, the demons are subject to us in your name, not because of us, right? That's where a lot of people forget the in your name part. The demons are subject to the 72 because of the name of Jesus. That's why. Okay, and they were recognize you got the power, Jesus. I mean, people are our demons are like you know jumping off ship and out of people and all this other stuff because of your name because you got power in your name. Right? That is cool. I mean, don't don't misunderstand. It's very very cool. And if you ever gone through that experience, it's very very cool. But it's also a, re- a quick reminder that there's a lot of stuff that goes on because there's serpents, there's scorpions, and there's things that are out there to hurt us. And that's that's a real active part of our spiritual warfare. And Jesus makes this really cool statement. He said, yeah, you know, it's actually – it's cool that that's going on, but it's better that your name is written in heaven. There's two elements to that that are just outstanding. Number one, it's better that God knows your name and your name is written in heaven. What does that mean, your name is written in heaven? That means when the show is over, you'll be there. That's what it means. And that he knows who you are. And that heaven is better. See, all the victories, all the good moments, and we do have good moments. We have victory moments, right? Right? Heaven is better. Heaven doesn't have part-time victories. Heaven is victorious. Oh, I, I got to put that on a bumper sticker. Heaven does not have part-time victories. Heaven is victorious. It's the place where we dance on streets of gold. It's the place where problems have lost their power. Issues have disappeared. Frustrations and cares and fears have been annihilated. It is awesome that we get to prevail from time to time. Heaven is better. It is what keeps us going when we don't have as many victories. Now, isn't that so cool? That's the art of holding eternal life. That's the art of understanding eternal hope. Okay? All right. Which Jewish official, which uh, Jewish leader in Israel, in the Old Testament, had 150 Jewish people and officials eating at his table, prepared for him food every day? Nehemiah. Some people think he was the uh, shortest guy because he was Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Uh, but other people think it was Peter because Peter slept on his watch. Get it? Okay. We'll take our break and then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Thanks a lot for all the blessing that you give me. Thanks a lot for all the ways that you have came. The David Spoon Experience. I want you to catch something because uh, for some reason the church feels the need to over answer cultural changes that take place. Look at Jesus. He didn't care about anyone's opinion. That's what it says right there. And you do not care about anyone's opinion. Jesus didn't go, yes, I do. No, he didn't. He didn't. He never, because he didn't. That's exactly right. He is true. So they said, we know that you are true and teach the way of God. That's aletheis, which means speaking the truth completely, nothing hidden, being real. He teaches the way of God correctly. That's aletheis, which is the case is according to the fact, and doesn't care about anyone's opinion. The Greek word here literally means does not look at people's faces. In other words, when you are doing radio, I can't see faces except for Captain Chris, okay? I can't see if your face is giving approval or denial because the only way that happens is by text or phone or whatever the case may be. When an actor acts, they can look on stage and see with the audience if there's approval. Jesus didn't seek people's facial approvals. He didn't care. 
And you think, well, no, he cared plenty. No, he cared about the mission to save the lost. He didn't care about those who were going to reject in the capacity that he sought their approval. He never sought their approval. He didn't leave, live, let me say that, he didn't live for people's positive responses to him. He walked at the pleasure of the Father. Whatever the Father wanted him to do or say, that's what he did. Which is when you'll hear me say, we do it for the author and not the audience. Because I think some of you people are literally some of the nicest people I have ever met in my human journey. But you still don't have a heaven to put me in. And that's what it comes down to. And I know that says that sounds so, you know, harsh or what it's like, are you serious? Okay. If the Lord tarries and I die, you are not going to help me. <laughs> I just don't know any other way to say it. You know what I'm saying? And so I want you guys to catch that. To catch this is why Jesus was so different. It's because he spoke the truth, he said it according to, to, to what the truth was, and he didn't seek people's approval in sharing. He just was like, look, I'm telling you exactly what the Father's told me to say. This is exactly how the Spirit's leading me, exactly what the Father wants to be said. And then you look at that and you go, ooh, how about us? And if you can't shout sight, you'll have to face up. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Getting ready for our next trivia question. Then we've got to do our history and then the last teaching. Here's your trivia question. Now, I want you to think about this. I'm going to give it to you. You're probably not going to know. From the direct quote, but I want you to think along lines of New Testament, how Jesus would reply. According to Proverbs 25, 21, what should you do if your enemy is hungry? There you go. According to Proverbs 25, 21, what should you do if your enemy is hungry? How would Jesus respond to that? Uh, you can also look up Proverbs 25, 21. I'm just saying, how would you, you know, that's, that's what we're looking to do. If you think you know the answer, uh, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. As well, send an email, david at he must increase dot org. In the meantime, we are going to do history because I do take the time to do the history. So history, history. Let's go, let's go. All right, there, <clears throat> there's a couple things. <laughs> I've got to be very careful here, especially opening this line. Ready? Now, when I tell this, everybody who is easily offended, the Bible says love is not easily offended. <laughs> so so there. Okay, we do have somebody calling in for the trivia question. We, I might stall because part of this is it's, uh, it's uh, borderline. <laughs> it's, it's borderline. Uh, so we're going to do history, but we do have somebody that's ready to answer a trivia question. So I think what we'll do is we'll take that first because that seems to be the better part of wisdom in my own brain right now. So, Gabriel, let's go ahead and send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? This is Gary. How are you today? I'm doing fine, Gary. I appreciate you asking. Been uh I did take the day off yesterday. I was feeling pretty tired Sunday. I knew I was getting tired Friday night and Saturday morning, but I was pretty tired yesterday, so I I did a lot of nothing. <laughs> That's what I did. Well, I prayed for all of you Sunday. I appreciate that. And I have, like I said, I just need you to keep on praying. That helps so much. All right, here we go. This is an interesting one because it's the Old Testament, yet there's a New Testament connection to it in many ways. According to Proverbs 25, 21, what should you do if your enemy is hungry? You give him something to eat. You that, give him bread to eat. You that is bread. correct, sir! Bread to eat, and if he's thirsty, give him something to drink. That is right, and it's amazing because it's in Proverbs, and people don't 
pull a lot of that from the Old Testament. They think that's oh, just New Testament thinking, but it's like, no, 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 that's right there in the Old Testament. The Lord doesn't want that. You know, there's that one incident where they had the, with the prophet, and the, the guy was like, should I kill them all? And it's like, Elijah was like, no, feed them all. You know, take care of them all. Take and make sure everybody's okay. It's amazing, isn't it? Excellent job. Did you know that right away, or did you have to look it up? I actually looked it up. But, yeah. um, that, but that's a good one. I see. I'd rather you look it up because that means that you're in the book. So that's, that's <laughs> fine. That's what's worth it to me. I don't usually look them up. I don't. But this time I did. Yeah. You know what? I know you don't. <laughs> you know what's so funny about you? I know when you answer, when you call, I would say it's probably 98.8 or 9%. This is coming straight. This is it. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome, and I appreciate you calling in and sharing that, and that is the right answer. So well, thank you, and I'll keep praying for you, and God bless you. You too, brother. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. Excellent job, Barbara. All right. Now, uh, going to the history. We already played history. We're not going to repeat it, so a couple things I'll do, and then I'm going to exit out of the history with a terrible thing. You'll understand in a second. Uh, 1977, on this day, Elvis Presley died at the age of 42. 42. That's pretty young. Come on. Uh, 1954, the first issue of Sports Illustrated magazine came out. Too bad. They used to be so good. I don't know. Uh, here, this is much more important. 1930, the first color cartoon with sound is made. It's called Fiddlesticks. That's pretty interesting. Uh, today is Stay Home With Your Kids Day. <laughs> As if. Uh, National Bratwurst Day. I do like bratwurst. Uh, Cupcake Day in Australia. I like cupcakes. National Roller Coaster Day. I'm 50-50 depending on the roller coaster. <laughs> and National Tell-A-Joke Day. <laughs> so normally I just do my roses are red, violets are bluish. If it wasn't for Jesus, you'd all be Jewish kind of joke. Uh, but I'll also throw one more in there. Don't get offended. It's a joke. A grasshopper walks into a lounge. That's right. I use the word lounge. And the bartender looked at him and said, you know, we have a drink named after you. And the grasshopper says, you have a drink named Steve. Okay. That's the joke. <laughs> I happen to find that funny. <laughs> you have a drink named Steve. <laughs> okay. Luke chapter 10, I'm just skipping right past it. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. A lot of people like that joke. Uh, now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Okay. Now, just just understand that. Before you get into the hall, and whether you're a Martha or a Mary, you know. You know if you're a Martha. You know if you're a Mary. That's not what I want to focus on. Now, listen. Look at what Martha does. This, this right here. You know, right in the middle of the whole thing. Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him, referring to Jesus, and said, Lord... Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? That's number one. Tell her then to help me. That's number two. Okay, so these are the two things I want to focus on. Uh, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? I'm the only person doing anything, Jesus. You ever heard that one? Ever felt that way? Okay. And then her next response is the legend. Tell her then to help me. This is akin to when Peter and John at the end of the Gospel of John where Jesus tells Pete, Peter he's going to have a, a rough go at it at the end. And then Peter looks at John and goes, what about him? <laughs> See? And this is that same spirit. So as you can tell, this is a well-known spirit amongst true followers of Jesus Christ. Okay. Tell them to help me. What about that person? It's not fair. It's not fair. What's not fair is that humanity got to continue. What's not fair is that God gives you a breath. What's not fair is all the favors and the graces and the mercies, because it's certainly not based on fairness. It's based on his character. 
and we have this desire, well, if I'm going through it, make them go through it too, which is the exact opposite of how Jesus actually did it. He actually suffered for us to the level where we wouldn't have to suffer the same way, and in following his suffering, it just simply makes us like him. It doesn't accomplish what his accomplished. And so the idea behind this is to grasp that we can't have that spirit. Remember what Jesus said when, when Peter and, and James were like, let's call fire down on heaven from him, right? The sons of thunder there. And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are. Don't, don't want that. Don't have that. Don't own that. Don't live like that. Don't be that kind of Christian. Well, come on, Jesus, tell them to help me for crying out loud. I'm doing all the work. Don't do that. Because that's not the right spirit to have. If you're the only one going through it, well, praise the Lord that God considered you worthy to endure it. Praise the Lord he has enough trust and confidence in you that you picked up whatever it was that was on the ground and have run with it. And praise the Lord you're doing it. But what we want to do is, well, it's not fair. This person should do it and this person. Stop that. That is being the wrong kind of childlike. That's not being humble. That's being bratty. That's a big difference, right? And so Jesus tells her no and rebukes her, but it's her sister. She should go through it too. <laughs> let's have a better spirit than that. How about that? Let's, let's shoot for the better one. You know what? I'm enduring it, and, and if you don't have to go through it, I'm willing to endure it all the more. That would be the right spirit to go through. Okay? Let's try that. What a weird show. Yet I love it because it's just what the Lord wanted. All right, folks, you've been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, taking a 22 and a half hour break. Then we'll come back. More insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. <laughs> 